I saw you get out of your car when I was far away. That's the impression your constituents have. And so I'm really curious about your own electoral calculus. Like, what do you think is facing you in November? I'm really, I think it would be a fascinating town hall to talk about race and policing here. I think it would lead to possibly a lot of uh, understanding, catharsis, and, and better policies. But it's, it's impossible for people to understand what you're thinking when you're keeping silent about a very big problem. Um, Secondly, I'd like to speak to Chief Rodriguez. Please address the address up to the chair, please. <coughs> sure. If Chief Rodriguez ran a McDonald's, and I walked into that McDonald's on my own two feet, and I was put into a coma and wheeled out and later died, I think one of a few things would happen. I think the people responsible would be fired. I think he would be fired. Or maybe, possibly, nothing happened. I deserved it, something. But no one's proving that third thing. And so I want to know how Chief Rodriguez expects to keep his job when he doesn't have leadership to run McDonald's. Why this community is paying his salary to run a police department, of all things. And I think if there's one silver lining to this tragedy turned farce that you're presiding over, it's that your nervous chicken shit smart is on its way to becoming a national joke. Yeah. Hi, Julie Cross. I'm here to talk about the murder of Eric McNeil at the hands of your police department. Um, we see your new tactics here today. This is not going away. We are not going away. The time of reckoning isn't coming. It's here right now, not just in National City, but across the nation. And if you think you can cover up for corrupt and murderous police department, you are gravely mistaken. And I'm talking to you, Kano. I'm talking to you, Morris, and I'm talking to you, many people. You need to immediately vote to agendize Eric McNeil's murder and subsequently vote for an investigation. And if you do not, do you see these people back here? 
these fierce people that have stopped at nothing, they will direct all their attention towards you. All their efforts and all of our pent up rage for over 500 years of heinous crimes against people of color committed by the people in power, people like you today. Look at me, Jerry. I'm looking at you. Yeah, turn away. Please address yourself to the chairman. Okay, act now. Act now, chair, power, accomplice. And if you don't, you are all accessories to murder. And when the demands of Eric's families are met, because they will be met, because we will not stop, we will be here every single meeting, every single time. We will not stop, and when those demands are met, we will hold you all accountable as accessories to murder. Nobody can 
example, you said at the beginning, God is a judge. Well, he's going to judge. So we want to hear that covers up for anybody's murder. Okay? Because God is big. He knows the pain of me. Any mother that has suffered in the loss of a child. Okay? So, these people are not going away. I'm not going away. So, there's no free pass to murder. And if you guys are covering something, there's no free pass for you guys to murder. That's uh, Earl McNeil, the fourth. And the other was Earl McNeil, the third. And there's a second. And there's a fifth and a sixth. Everybody here is Earl McNeil. Well, what I was going to read today was I was going to read something from the Bible, but I'm going to read something from your Bible. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's us. That's right. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these, uh, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. That's right. And to institute new government. Yeah. Laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be charged, should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right them by abolishing the forms which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and, us, uh, and us, usurpations, pursuing invariably by the same object, it events they design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Take quite a bit of time, it short. There are 17 families that have been killed and brutalized by NCPD, National City Police Department. Um, we as a group decided to give Mona and Alejandra the roses in honor of those families because you guys have been the strongest among the weakest. Um, some of those 17 families may be here today out in the crowd um, in the weight room. And you just heard a gentleman talk about corruption, long, long systemic corruption, time to be abolished, time to get rid of. Um, we have watched and watched for 60 days today as a narrative changed and it continued to change um, and it continued to change. The family was re-traumatized yesterday in the meeting that they had with National City Police Department where your chief was absent, but the ME was there. And the information that they gave was not information that the family didn't know, but they had no proof. And in our country, you're innocent until proven guilty, but many black and brown bodies are guilty until they prove innocent. And so we say that if NCPD is indeed innocent, then they should release the videotapes. And we should be able to see, the world should be able to see what their innocence is. And until then, they are subject to guilt. I would also say that James Carter was an innocent man who was in prison and was beaten almost to death. And the district attorney of San Diego County knows he was innocent, but yet she used Earl McNeil as an informant. Earl McNeil, who NCPD just painted as a drug addict, as somebody who was delusional and paranoid, 
and we want to know why the sheriff department is here and we're up right here because they were culpable in this. Nobody has told us or showed this video for them as well. And we are also going to ask that they release their videos and that people understand that when you are corrupt, the people will stand. And the only time we will ride on backs is when we are bent, we are bent no more. Thank you for your time. on behalf of Earl Mitchell, who doesn't have the opportunity to do so at this time because he was murdered while he was in custody of the National City Police Department. I grew up very near here in Chula Vista, and it is appalling to me that people could go into police custody, come out dead, like whether from coma or otherwise, while still in police custody, and there's no investigation that is being shared with the family, other than like, other than just um, very superficial words, rather than showing the videotapes. They need to see the videotapes, and I feel that you, as the city council board, have the ability to compel the police department to show the tapes. And I don't understand why you don't. If it was your family member, if you had an ill family member, I know many of us have mentally ill or family members who have been struck in with um, addiction. And I, I find it very hard to believe that if it was your family member, you would be compliant with this, no videotape showing. And I feel that you're complicit by not compelling them to do so. So I would urge you to vote to put Earl McNeil in this case on the agenda, and I would encourage you to vote in favor of the family to release the tapes. Additionally, I think there should be a Citizens Oversight Board of National City Police Department and the murders that happened there. There are 17 of them. The names is Earl McNeil, William Tigger. Your time is up. Thank you very much. Next we go on to Diamond Wallace. Good evening, my name is Diamond Wallace. I'm a representative with assembly member Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher, the assembly woman for the cities of Chula Vista, National City, and San Diego. And today I'm going to read a letter on behalf of the assembly woman. Dear Mayor Morrison and Council, it has been nearly two months since National City resident Earl McNeil sustained life-threatening injuries while in police custody. It has been reported by members of McNeil's family that upon his arrival to the UCSB Medical Center, Earl was missing several teeth, patches of hair, and swollen on various parts of his body, sustained an injury to his spinal cord, and endured brain damage so severe that he had to be placed on life support. After two weeks in the hospital, Earl McNeil passed away, leaving his family with real pain and questions. The McNeil family has shown great grace, resilience, and respect while waiting for the information they need in order to grieve in peace. They request that the National City Police Department give the most clear account possible of the events that transpired and ultimately led to the death of their loved one, including sharing all available video and audio recordings of Earl's interaction with NCPD officers. I respectfully ask that you help ensure the highest level of transparency possible throughout the entire investigation process and support, support the McNeil family in procuring the answers to their questions surrounding Earl's death. Please release the video and audio. I'm a retired IC nurse. I know how hard it is to calm down or hold down a combative person who is under distress and psychotic. I know how hard it is. I've been kicked at, I've been punched at, I've been spit on, I've had poop thrown at me. However, when we do that at the hospital, when we take calm down those patients, we don't get angry. We don't hurt them afterwards. 
We try to save them. I've also taken care of comatose patients and had to deal with the families under distress. Why wasn't Earl McNeil taken directly to the hospital when he called for help? Why wasn't he put on a 5150 and taken to the hospital? Why, what happened to Earl McNeil? I can't believe that this is just being allowed to be buried under here. The National City Police Department must have a protocol. Why wasn't it followed? Followed. Why, where is the medical examiner's report? He must have went to the coroner after his death. Where is the report? Where is the release of the tapes that show what happened? Where is your empathy? Where is your compassion for the people of your city that you are supposed to protect and serve? I am appalled by the lack of it. Mr. McNeil's family and Mr. McNeil especially did not deserve this. And really, it is just deplorable. Thank you. We've all heard about the uh, terrible attack on Trader Joe in Los Angeles a few days ago. Two very positive things happened in that terrible event. The perpetrator lived. The police did not act like judge, jury, and executioner. That's amazing and wonderful. And today, the chief of police went on TV to admit that the only fatality that took place, a young woman who was the manager of Trader Joe, was actually shot by a police bullet. No investigation, no shoving it away secretly. They actually, they actually got on TV and said, we are culpable for what happened. That happened today. That chief has integrity. That he has integrity. Thank you very much. Um, what, I, what I'm here to ask is that you do the right thing. Release all the videos and audios, unseal the medical report, release the names of the officers involved, and just do the right thing, do the moral thing. You are here and you're leaving a legacy for your children. Your name is going to forever be attached to trying to hide the information and do injustice rather than justice or just us rather than justice. And finally, I'd like to leave you with the thought that you and I and all of us are going to face God. We're all leaving this planet. And we will be judged by our actions, not our rituals, but by our actions. What we did and what we failed to do, please consider that. Do the right thing. Yeah. My name on the speaker slip was Yusef McNeil, and I'm here to speak for my family. My family wants the release of the video and audio tapes unedited. My family wants the release of the medical examiner's report. My family wants an independent investigation of law enforcement and this case. And my family wants the names of the officers involved in this case. I'm here to speak about the Mental Health Advisory Board in this situation. Mental health is not a crime. Mental health is not a crime. <laughs> Look at the majority of mental health people who have lost their lives when contacted with law enforcement. We have Earl McNeil, we have Alfred Longo, we have uh, Ru uh, Ru uh, Raul Ramirez, and more, many more. We have 17 names on this list of people here in Na uh, National City that have been, had their lives snuffed out by law enforcement. The PERC team is underfunded, undermanned, the protocols are never followed. It wasn't followed with Earl McNeil, it wasn't followed with Alfred Alonbo. And these lead into the deaths of people with families, with children, with mothers, with sons, with daughters. The homeless rate is skyrocketing in San Diego. And most of those people have mental health crisis, mental health issues. This is only going to skyrocket out of control with people having uh, contact with law enforcement, which law enforcement has criminalized their misfortune. We want official response from this uh, uh, mental health advisory board, which most of us didn't even know exist. We didn't even know it existed. And this board is silent on the deaths of these people. 
We demand diversity on the mental health advisory board. What do you know? There's no diversity on the mental health advisory board when most people that die from the mental health uh, crisis are people of color? What a shock. What a shock. That's the due to this board silence. It is a criminal neglect of the board. It's a criminal neglect of the city council. It's a criminal neglect of the mayor. It's a criminal neglect of law enforcement. Thank you. Yesterday, the family met with uh, the police. Today, National City Police issued a communication to the press, painting a rosy picture of the meeting. In that regard, I'm going to enter into the record the official statement from the attorney for the family that I advocate. National City Police Department gave only a sequence of events from arrest, observation, transport to the county jail. Rejection at the county jail booking and ambulance transport to UCSD Hillcrest Hospital. All over an eight hour period according to some in the media. National City Police provided no timeline, showed no videos, and played only one brief audio recording. The family of Earl McNeil wants more transparent disclosure of the facts surrounding his death while in custody and an explanation including Earl McNeil's history as an informant for law enforcement. That's how the family feels about that meeting. Secondly, there's no reason I should be in a sling and refer to an orthopedic surgeon who I'll see on Thursday. I was peacefully and quietly walking to a squad car I was directed to with an officer escorting me. Sergeant Wilkins decided for no apparent reason that he would escort me as well. He walked up and started yanking on me, pulling me. I said, why are you yanking me? I asked him to stop several times. He put his elbow in the full arm and yanked me with his full arm while I was already peacefully, compliantly, and quietly walking. They treated a white man in front of cameras that way. How does National City Police Department treat people of color in private when there's no cameras watching? It has now been 59 days since Mr. McNeil walked into the National City Police Department and ended up dead. When I commented three weeks ago, I asked a list of 14 questions. Not a single one of those questions has been answered in the last three weeks. Today I want to focus in on the issues of trust and transparency. The NCPD operating procedure about body-worn cameras specifically states that, quote, law enforcement agencies in San Diego County recognize that the thoughtful disclosure of video evidence of officer-involved shooting incidents to the public can increase transparency enhance community relations and promote confidence in the criminal justice system. While Earl McNeil's death did not involve a shooting, in custody deaths fall into the same category for the district attorney's review and they involve all the same concerns. There are other feel-good statements in this policy, like such videos will be evaluated for potential release. Then I get to what I see as the ugly reality. Here in San Diego County, all the police departments have signed an agreement with the DA's office that establishes a protocol in these incidents. Under that protocol, which it also has lots of feel-good language about understanding that the public wants to see these videos, in fact, video is not going to be released, it says, until after the police department and the DA have both completed their investigations one after another. And the policy even contemplates that that will take 180 days, with no guarantees that it will be even that. The DA policy further says, quote, we're required to follow our ethical and legal duties not to disclose information or evidence until our review is complete. On that, I call BS. Police departments all over this country release body cam evidence quickly, long before the investigation is over. There is no transparency here. So what steps could this council and police department be taking under your own policy? A supervisor has the discretion to show this footage, the body cam footage, to a complainant to, to assist in clarifying or resolving the complaint. Section 79. That is exactly what should happen. So I just wanted to speak a little bit about what I saw at the last city council meeting here on July 17th. After the National City Police Department removed us from a public building for a public meeting, I watched as they systematically picked and chose who got to come back yep. into the yeah. stand and speak. 
I watch a white person after a white person who looks like me be trusted that their name was the one being called, while people of color were not being trusted that it was their name. I watch media person after media person be allowed in, but a black cameraman be stopped and asked for his press credentials. <laughs> I watched the National City Police Department push and shove and threaten people of color and then profusely apologize for bumping me. I watched them literally cuff and drag an unconscious black woman out of the room and then turn to a white woman and ask her repeatedly to get up so that they didn't have to arrest her. And when she refused, they gave her time to finish her texts, remove her jewelry, and give her belongings to a friend before they gently escorted her from the room. I could go on and on, but quite frankly, I don't have time to list everything that I saw, so I just want to say this. I've been at these meetings and you have asked us to be civil, and I get that, I really get that. But what I think that you guys don't get or you don't remember is that civility is a two-way street. And you, the elected officials, we need you to hold up your end of the bargain for civility. You are supposed to be the people's voice. You are supposed to be our justice seekers, not theirs. Right. So yeah. please right. do what you can. Yeah. I know that there are things that tie your hands, but what you can absolutely do is put this on the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Sotelo Solis and Ms. Rios for doing that. We need one more vote. Please step up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm a white lady that got treated really well last week while I got arrested. Um, but first, before we even get to that, I want to talk about how I ended up sitting down on the floor outside. Um, we came to this meeting and we rehashed how basically we kept getting kicked out of a public meeting. But what we saw, I saw much of the same what she saw. What I saw is uh, Muhammad get his name called to come speak inside. And he had already been two-handed pushed, I believe, by the police chief yep. in open session. Actually, let's go back to that. Um, the most shocking thing for me last week was the absolute lack of concern in openly putting their police, putting their hands mm -hmm. and pushing mm -hmm. people in this room while all the cameras are on. Mm -hmm. they, like, literally, there's no thought in their head that maybe that might be a problem later, or maybe I'm gonna have to answer some questions later. It's like, no, push, walk, push, walk. And that's exactly what ended up having out, happening outside. I'm looking at who the police are, are yelling at. It was Mohammed, Marco, um, Mika, I'm standing there. Uh, I'm a teacher, Marco's a teacher, Mohammed is a counselor. Uh, Mark works for a lawyer. We have Nadia Contreras who's sitting there. She's running for city council in Lemon Grove. This is who your police department was terrified of. This is, I see uh, Wilkins, they do this proximity control thing where they come up and stand right in front of you and say, move back. And they're used to people moving back. And when you don't move back, they start pushing you. And when you say, and that's what happened to Mika. I watched that guy, Wilkins, get up on her. And she started yelling, get back. Yep. She doesn't have to move. And she wouldn't move, and so he pushed her. She rolls her ankle, ends up on the floor. Mm -hmm. And as I'm describing this to the officer that's standing in front of me blocking my path, he's like, no, that's not happening. That's not happening. And he just starts doing it to me. I say, you're doing the exact same thing. It's called proximity control. We use this in the classroom. I don't know what to tell you. You have officers clearly treating people very differently based on the color of their skin mm -hmm. and openly being violent in this room with zero, zero fear that there will be consequences. So I wanted to uh, address a specific uh, quote that this uh, Jack Lantern next to me uh, said to the media. Uh, he said, when you start trying to build the bully city council and government officials, it really crosses the line. And the fact that he thinks that, that we're, we're bullying him is laughable. Very laughable. First of all, he doesn't get to tell us how to protest. That's right. Second of all, him and his people are the real bullies, okay? That's right. I, I, had, I saw him smiling at Tom, while Tasha was being arrested. Smiling as she was being injured. Smiling as I was being grabbed. Okay, smiling like he was gonna get away with it. He was gonna get away with Earl Neal's death. 
Okay? I saw him, I saw your, I saw his officers do not let people in this building selectively. Uh, that, that, that reporter, you sit right there. Right? Sit right there. He wasn't let in at first. He, they were asking him for his credentials while they were letting all, all of the white reporters in. Um, I've seen I've seen these police officers escalate situations. Um, I've seen them push people. Uh, Tasha and I last week did a better job de-escalating the situation than uh, these officers did. Um, I felt that I felt the heavy hand of his uh, corporal. As he as he was grabbing me, as if he was about to beat a spouse. Mm. Uh, I mean, look at me. You know, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, yeah, and I've seen him personally try to incite violence in his very chamber when he shoved Muhammad. When he shoved Muhammad. Okay. So um, and now and now he, now he's brought the sheriff's here. I mean, what an asshole. You know? No. This guy is the bully. This guy is the bully, and these are people that had enough of being bullied and were fighting back. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Can you get off your phone and pay attention, dude? You know they're talking about you. You need to sit down. Yeah, you need to pay attention you need to what's going down. on. I am sitting down. I'm not going to tell you again. He's sitting down, is Pay attention. Please address the chair. There you go. Okay, so I'm Kat. I film cops. I track cops. I document killer cops. I track deaths. And these are the 17 stolen lives that we have um, that were published publicly. Um, another thing, because we are journalists and this is our right to film, credentialed by the San Diego Police Department, not. But we also document cases such as lawsuits. So let's go back to October 5th, 2001. National City officer fired for shooting unarmed man in the back, and there was no prosecution. Aaron Stevenson fatally shot 19-year-old Emmanuel Sotelo. But the district attorney does not plan, did not uh, plan to prosecute the officer. Police said they had refused to name the officer because they had received a tip that gang members planned to target him. Stevenson was involved in another fatal shooting on September 27th, 1999. He fired eight times and three other officers fired, fired a total of seven times at a mentally ill man who had stabbed himself and reportedly had threatened, allegedly, officers with his knife. Let's go to another scenario in 2005. DA clears seven national city officers, deputy in shooting death of suicidal man. August 14, 2005, the SWAT action ended near a cemetery on Granger Street after a four hour standoff. Armando Lazos died of 56 gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. Residents of National City and Lincoln Acres were outraged that police fired nearly a hundred rounds at Lazos. Mentally ill man, a hundred rounds. No, he's not. He's National fiddling on his Eden phone. Chief Gonzalez said he didn't release the letter earlier because Hope you're he looking thought at the policy the sheriff's department or the people district people. attorney's office would do so. During meetings the police department held for residents, after the shooting, many much. people complained that officers sprayed the neighborhood with gunfire without warning them or evacuating homes. One family was getting ready for Sunday church. They said bullets lodged in a bedroom closet. Well, 100 rounds. 100 rounds on one guy. 100 rounds. 100 rounds. Hey, get off your phone and pay attention, man. We're talking to you. There is no time for the audience. Thank you for doing it up here. Next we go to, I think it's Mattel Rodriguez. You know she's not smiling. Great, man. He's a punk. Respect. No, he's a punk, man. Respect. I'm going to be respectful. He's been disrespecting everybody here. Good evening. I'm Brother Rodriguez. I'm a teacher in Sweetwater District for about 17 years. I'd like to commend Rios and um, Sotero Solis for being strong women trying to represent our community while we have male sexist men that prevent them from speaking out for our community. And you should be completely ashamed of yourselves. And you pretty much screwed with the wrong woman. 
because I'm politically savvy and I'm politically powerful within my teachers union. And you better believe I'm going to bring these people behind me in the next election. Because if they can bring water to a hunger striker that I just completed a hunger strike for me, Earl McNeil, believe me, I know how to mobilize and organize the community into the voting polls. So you should be afraid of me. And I want to make sure that you understand that Officer Ingwa, the last time I was here, I was very weak. And this woman pushed me out of the building to keep me from speaking because somehow, some way, she observed me and thought that somehow that I was violent. And I'm a teacher, and I had finished taking two hunger strikers to the hospital, and I don't know what these police officers think, or how you assume who's violent and who isn't. You would put shame to my brother who's a police officer. For the last 20 years, he's given his life as a police officer, and my nephew who I changed. Huh? No, I'm gonna look at him, and just the way you ignore them, I'm ignoring you. I just want to say that I'm a native to San Diego, and as a young girl, I had always been told and afraid to come into national cities because of the wild, wild west tactics that have been known across the city that take place in national cities. I think that it is outrageous that none of you are willing to be the third vote to put this as to make Earl McNeil's murder an agenda item, what is it that you're hiding? Right. I'm really concerned that not one of you is willing to get this matter heard when you see the outpour of diverse people that are here. Each one of you has been elected into your position. And just like Myrtle Cole, the incumbent, was beat in a primary election, you all need to be concerned about your seats because none of them are guaranteed. Right. Right. I here to come into National City, but what I want you to know is that you all need to be worried because this time it was Earl McNeil, McNeil and before him there were several others. We're here to make sure that that will be the last one. And so you all need to be scared now. That's the, that is, and why is it that it's not immediately put on the agenda to have the chief of national city police terminated? We don't want it. He does not represent the people, and we do not want him. That needs to be an immediate action item. Yeah. On behalf of Manila Divider, I'd like to name three names in the not so distant past that speak a little bit about the legacy of brutality of the National City Police Department. Taco Rivera, 1975, yeah. murdered in cold blood by the National City yeah. Police Department. That's right. Emmanuel Sotero, 2001, murdered in cold blood by the National City PD. And Earl McNeil, 2018, murdered in cold blood by the National City PD. Get off your phone! This is the wild, wild west that my sister was talking about before. This is the legacy of National City. Two people on this council showed courage. Three people showed cover-up, and I want to tell them, on behalf of the organization that we are, Carlo Nendivil, Dan Asco. Manny, Dan Vergüenza. But we want to say this, the reason they can shove, the reason they can push, the reason they can treat everybody like this, and the reason they can go wildly on people of color, is because they have power. It should not be that way. More than a review board, more than just a window dressing, and more than a mental health board that is about as diverse as two ghost eating marshmallows in a blizzard, we need real civilian review, real review boards. We need community control of the police. Yep. And I will tell you this, City Council, and I will tell you this, NCPD, 
Nothing can stop the power of the people that are organized. And Pueblo Organizado Vencerá. Let's go, Brazil! How are you doing? Uh, my name is Armando Budis. I'm a resident of National City. I was here and a few uh, minutes ago. You were in here. I don't know where you were. Uh, probably taking a vacation. But I wanted to say that uh, uh, I wanted to make sure that, the, that everybody knows, so the city council knows that, I'm a, that I live here, I've been living here in the city for 20 years, and that uh, I understand that you guys are notorious for not listening to people that come from the outside. I think we live in the Republic of National City, and we're not allowed to have other people's opinions in the city council. So, um, I'm, I'm here to demand of a couple of things. As a, as a citizen, as a taxpayer, as a voter, I'm here to demand, first of all, that the chief resigns, that you force them to resign. Yes. Another one is for you to force the police department or whatever entity to release any evidence that will clear either the officers or put people in jail that uh, the, bur the murder Earl uh, 59 days ago. The other one is the we want to make sure that after this, after all of this is over and people actually go to jail, that we, uh, the, the, the you create a real police review board, not the mockery that was that, that happened a few years ago. Yeah. Was, by the way, I had to resign when, when we were forming that because all of you guys loaded up the the, the, the citizen review board with a bunch of pigs. You being one of them, and you all remember that. <laughs> Also, Sergeant Wilkins was fired. So, to say this is, you know, 59 days ago was was uh, was Earl McNeil. Uh, I had kids uh, that I raised in the city. Who's going to be next? Next day, it's going to be a Pedro, a Juan, maybe an Armando, an Albert, or a Jerry. When is this going to stop? Mm -hmm. Tear down this fucking stupid uh, blue wall. We're tired of it. Yeah. And they are doing this. My brother, uh, when, my brother was outside and he just said, you know what? They can do this because we are not organized, everybody. If we're not organized, that's why they get away with it. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Okay. Worse than a little girl, dude. We have Mohammed. Yeah, we're all wrong. That's why he's playing around. He's gone where he's supposed to be this thing. Why is he even here? Why is he even here? I want to go into his office, man. I respect pigs, man. hoping after seeing people show up at every single meeting and fill up the bridge and fill up the council chambers and fill it out there, you guys would do something that your city attorney would give you legal advice that's proper and helpful for the city, but it's obvious that's not happening because the three of you continue to vote against putting yeah. this item on the agenda. And even if you think the officers are justified or for whatever reason you want to protect the police, why not put it on the agenda so you can have sufficient time to discuss? Because there might be other city people here that want to talk about things like their housing or rent control or things like that. And people are here to talk about Earl McNeil while it's an important issue is taking away from them. So why not put it on the agenda if people keep showing up and keep talking about it? Why can't you do that? Is it not your obligation as a city council member to put things on the agenda your citizens ask you to put on there? And if you do not do it, this all three of you. You're not going to be mayor anymore, so what's forcing you? Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is it? Honey. Do you want to answer? It's your time to speak. Yeah, I asked you a question. This is your time to speak. Yeah, you got it phrased and you got it. Exactly. Yeah, the guy that phrased it got it. Yeah. Next we have. Okay. Next we have uh, Leah Blake. Um, they they need give one moment for you to start. Restart your time. Um, good evening to the people. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I did not plan to speak, however, since I am here and I do have a speaker card, I do want to say that um, to the three of y'all who are holding up putting this Earl McNeil on the agenda and to the police officers who are protecting their department, 
and all their wrongdoings, you are disgusting. Yes. Y'all are sick. Yes. Is that it? Yes. A man, multiple people have died due to your police department. And y'all just don't care. Y'all do not care. And there are some of you guys that are okay people. But it's hard to tell when the rest of your department is acting like this. And it's hard to tell when you guys aren't doing anything and standing up against your colleagues when they're acting like this and when they're killing people. When they're defending, they're defending murderers is what you're doing. Right. It's sick. It's disgusting. It's, it's despicable. And it makes me ashamed to live in San Diego. I'm born and raised here. And I will always come back. But if this, this crap makes me never want to come back. And it makes me want to tell people, don't come to San Diego because it's turning into the South. Mm. This is just a repeat of what happened in the 60s and in the 50s. Right. Okay? This is, we talk about progress and we talk about how we are progressing from the lynchings and from Jim Crow segregation and we're back where we started. Yeah. Right. Nothing has changed. That's right. And you all should be ashamed of that. That's all. before the death of Earl Smith. He was allowed to be used because his mental state and other things that were going on in his life to lead up to his death, and he asked for help. I'm going to show you another scenario. My son James Carter, soul and spirit also died while he's doing 287 years in a maximum security penitentiary because of the things that Earl McNeil was allowed to say due to his mental status and was believed. I went to the district attorney and told him there was a guy that called me on the 4th of July to confess to this crime that they said my son did. The district attorney, who was running for city attorney, looked at me in my face and said, I know you're going to have to go to court and walked over to the cameras. So I just want to let you know, this is almost like a double-edged sword. Not only did Earl McNeil die, my son also died. And he's, his spirit and his soul is also dead. That's all I have to say. Think about that. Maybe you could come up with something else so this won't happen to other people. Thank you. You can't get a contractor to even replace one sidewalk panel for a thousand dollars. So it's it, this was done back in the eighties. This policy. Was I am Earl McNeil. I am Earl McNeil. I am Earl McNeil. I am Earl McNeil. I am
Name and badge. Name and badge. Name and badge. Name and badge. Every single one of you guys are going to be exposed, man. Expect us. Expect us in your neighborhood, man. You guys are going to be held accountable on the fucking streets. Remember us, okay? You remember us. What's your name and ID? Macias. M-A-C-I-A-S. Garcia 425. You guys are a bunch of cowards like your chief. Rounds 360. Okay. No, I'm just filming you. Man. You're a public official, man. Get used to it. You'll be seeing us in your neighborhood. Holding you guys accountable on the streets. Every move you guys make on those streets, you're going to be watched. You're going to be exposed. Say hi to YouTube because you guys are going to be on it from now on. Emmanuel Sotelo. Emmanuel Sotelo. You know that name? You know that name? He complied. He stuck his hands out the window and complied to you guys, and you guys still shot him in the arm. Emmanuel Sotelo, remember that name. Shot an unarmed man for complying with you guys. Name and ID. Mario to Fortnite. Name and ID. Scam of Fortnite. Name and ID? The terrorists, 476. You guys are all a bunch of cowards, just like your chief. Yeah, you too, punk. What the hell is this? What's up with the riot gear? You guys expecting a riot or what? Oh yeah. Oh, it's just you guys. Just you guys rioting. Always expecting the Wow, for real? What is this, Fallujah? <laughs> you never been to Fallujah, have you? No, I haven't, and I don't plan to go. I live in America, dude. Have you been in Fallujah? I thought so. Don't smirk. Yeah. I live in America. Not in Fallujah. Where we dress in normal fucking clothes, man, not like warriors, dude. You know, yeah. you know where they dress like that? In countries in the Middle East, bro, where I'm from. That's what they dress like. They beat the people for fucking protesting. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that in this country? I've heard of Nick Because he's, he's, sure it does, Cause he's fucking blue ISIS. Else. Blue ISIS. Funny, huh? I'm gonna ask you to step away from me, please. It's funny, isn't it? It's I'm just, it's I'm just a next to everybody else. Why? Right? Right? Because I'm talking with the camera? Like like I step forth. One step, okay? Six feet. Do you feel safer now? Do you feel safer, unarmed person? And you got this shit right here, dude? You feel safer because I took one step back, dude? You are a fucking coward. What do we got? We got teachers? Look at you, man. Look at you. Look how you're dressed against us, dude, in normal fucking clothes, man. You're, you're, you're okay with that, dude. You look like you're ready to go fucking catch Bin Laden and shit, dude. You're a fucking joke. Dude. Now, why are these guys dressed regularly and you're dressed all tactical? Because why doesn't everyone have tactics? He's the one that. Why doesn't everyone have uniforms? Why is it one or the other? Why do you get to choose? All that shit. What if your child was on this side? What would you do? This child now will be on this talk. side. You think, you're, you think your kids are proud of you for being like this, man? Your you're going against side. American citizens, dude. What would you dude? do if your children were on this side? Smirking at people who are trying to protest for justice and answers? Yeah, that's real big of you, bro. Yeah. You're a big, bad fucking man. Yeah. Big, real bad big. fucking man with your bulletproof vest real and your big. fucking tactical gear and your fucking grenade your launcher. What the fuck, dude? Your brothers are in regular uniforms and you're in here in tactical gear. 
we're not doing anything to you, but you're antagonizing. So we're not antagonizing. We're exercising our First Amendment. We are exercising our First Amendment freedom of speech. If you take another step towards me with that baton in your hand. It's not a baton. It's a monopod. This is a This is a monopod. Look at that shit, dude. Look at that shit. Of a camera tripod. I'm gonna put it away, okay? So you don't get hurt. So you don't get your eye poked out. Is that okay? Look, we're right unarm, here, I'm unarmed now. Unarmed arms. Thank you. Can I get close to you now? Do you feel safe? Do you feel better? Yeah, the worst thing we're going to do is talk uh, shit. That's literally the worst thing we're going to do. Dude, you got if bulletproof you vests on and everything, dude, and you're worried about a fucking monopod. You're worried about a monopod. Your brother should be more scared about the baton. They don't even have as much talk as this shit, dude. Do you know what a monopod is? It's a trap. Get your fucking hand off your gun, fucking coward. Which one of you killed Jonathan Coronel? Which one of you? Which one of you killed Sergio Wick? Yeah, for real. Huh? Too many lives. Yeah, looking, bitch. What's up, dude? We know the fucking names, man. Those are our people that you guys fucking killed, man. You have to expect this. Exactly, dude. You have to expect this. You dress like a fucking goon, man. When you ain't got your fucking gun and you keep shaking, you're the one in all your fucking riot gear, dude. Keep shaking. You keep walking towards me. You're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it. Intimidation, dude. Up, please you back need to up. chill the fuck out, man. Just give us a little right space, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. You need to calm homeboy down. He's the one antagonizing <laughs> shit and fucking starting shit. Yeah, right? Obviously. Sensitive. Afraid of a fucking monopod. You can't take the First Amendment rights of other people. You know, you can That's exactly what it is. Like you he can't take the First Amendment I was putting it away, you dumb fuck. I was putting it away. Yeah, I'm not holding it like you fucking are holding your gun, dude. Can you we're protesters with cameras. Yep. What are you afraid I got a of? Phone. Yeah. Why are you, you fucking afraid? Because you're asking it. Because you're smirking. Now, now, you're you're protesters. You're smirking you're, at us. You're that smirking. attitude right there is why fucking people hate it. cops, dude. Straight up. Your attitude. You are the epitome of a bad. Fucking cop. No, that is a fact, you. dude. All this shit ain't gonna save you. Bro. This whole persona of you is the epitome of a bad fucking cop. Your attitude is shit. You don't know. You see this officer you don't have sitting to react standing here, bro. You don't have to react I don't know you. I don't need to fucking you know you. You don't know us either, but you guys fucking stop us all the fucking time. Do not continue to right in front of us. I'm a fucking coward, dude. We get the First Amendment right. You can't handle criticism. What? Which one of you guys killed Sergio Wick? Which one of you guys killed Jonathan Cornell? Which one of you guys killed Sergio Wick? Which one of you guys killed Jonathan Cornell? Huh? Which one of you guys killed Sergio Wick? Was that you? Either, dude. Don't take it out on your kids, man. Don't, 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 don't
don't take it out on your kids, man. Don't beat your wife, man. You like this job? Is this what you signed up for? Huh? Is this what you signed up for? You're supposed to be defending the Constitution. You're supposed to be defending our right to free speech. And look at you, man. The fucking visor on your face like a fucking dumbass, dude. You guys are all fucking joke. Every single one of you guys. You guys think you're fucking hard shit. You ain't nothing without that badge. And this fucking tubby ass motherfucker, man. shoot people in the back. Huh? Fucking tubby piece of shit. all over the country and around the world. You are a fucking disgrace. While wow, that piece of shit cunt has got his weapon out and Brandon is said during a civil rights activist is bullshit. Where's your fucking watch, Commander? He has to identify himself. Those are the fucking laws. Where's the fucking watch, Commander, on this patrol right here? Nothing. More sovereign citizen fucking bullshit. Away, dude. He's Staring at the white man for two out of today. Right? Huh? Why are you, why are you the only one with your stick out? You're staring at the white guy. Oh, look, at now you're staring at the white guy. Oh, yeah. Now that it's louder. Yeah. Yeah. Shake your head. Why don't you put that stick away, man? Yeah, it sounded like it, right? Is that what it is? I spin you hardly. sticks out. This is the only guy that got a stick out. Oh, you trying to intimidate a black woman with no weapon? You coward? My only weapon is my melanin, you coward. You're a coward, Newman. Newman, you need a new job. You need a new job, you coward. We're going to block my cars back here. We can't back up anymore if you wanted us to. If you wanted us to back up, we have no room to back up. That's a weapon, man. That's brandishing a weapon. Do you see any of us with weapons? Do you see any of us with weapons? I mean, we're stuck. None of us are armed. Huh? 
So you're brandishing a weapon for no reason. None of us are armed. This guy too, right here. This guy too. You're brandishing a weapon for no reason. Any of us would be arrested for that, right? Yep. If I had a, if I had a stick and I was standing here yep. right now, oh, I almost, I almost got assaulted for fucking having a monopod. Yeah, you're a stupid fucking monopod. Right okay, dude. ABS journalist that was walking between me and him because she was just trying to get to a better spot. And he got all scared. They don't respect the first amendment. They don't respect our freedom of press. Go on the other side. She's just walking. These are cowards. Man. Stop at a monitor. Cowards. This guy right here, man. This guy wants it right there. Bad, man. He wants to fucking hurt people, man. Kind of a So what are you guys doing here exactly? What are you protecting? Are you protecting that island right there or what? What police chief? No, but I mean, what are they really protecting? We didn't like. We're not trying to take over the street. So what are you guys protecting? Are you guys protecting that little island right there? Because we don't give a fuck about it. All we want is the, the tapes released. That's it. That's all we want. When you guys are protecting this little fucking island, we don't care, man. This is what happened. No, you're a joke, dude. No. All right, put your fucking stick away. Hit me or put it away. Hit me or put it the fuck away. Yeah, what's the point of having it out if you ain't gonna use it? No? no? You're looking really shitty in front of all these cameras right That's now. That's why he wants to use it. To use it. Yeah, come on. This is exactly you what you want to do it here, asshole. Because people like, like, keep in mind. shouldn't be working with live things. Yeah. This motherfucker still got his hand on his gun. He's holding this. Yeah, I see you. 20 baton. And, and as, you know, none of these other officers are holding their batons. They're at their side. This one wants to be special. Smaller the boy, bigger the outfit. And that's why everyone's crowded around here. Newman. Hey, careful. Newman. We know who the beater is. He's afraid of black people. Be careful. Dwayne. That's Newman. Newman's afraid of fucking everything. Oh, that's just Newman. <laughs> that's just Newman. Everybody knows Newman. Everybody knows he likes to violate people's rights. That's just Newman. Come on, guys. Newman. Wait till we look him up and see how many people he's Oh, yeah. Yep. Guess what? Every single one of you guys are going to be docked. All right, you guys. We're going to get all your information. Names, badge numbers, who you killed. Helicopter in the sky, man. When I talk to internal affairs in the sheriff's department, your ass is going out the park first thing tomorrow morning.
focus our attention on this. On this. Traffic, get off the oh, street. He's got. He can Thank do you. whatever he wants. They're, so, they're sovereign citizens. They're sovereign citizens. Yep, that's right. Sovereign citizens are exempt from laws. Sovereign citizens able to break laws and get away with it. Take this out on your wife and kids. Please, please do not abuse your wife and children. 40% of them will. Yep. 40% of them yep. are going home. Please do not. They're fucking family. That's how I know. Please do not take this out on your family. Please, this is your job. Please do not take this out on your family or the community, okay? Thank you. I'm not talking to you, you piece of shit. I'm not talking to you, man. You fucking Nazi. Fucking Nazi. Fucking Nazi. I already know you're gonna go home and beat your wife. You're a piece of shit. Sergeant Barry. Sergeant Barry, are you the watch commander on scene? Are you supervisor on scene? You have to identify yourself. Uh, the website is Transparency California. Can somebody look up this guy? Oh, break ranks. You're going there. They don't talk, but they will fucking obey. And give them a chance, they'll love to attack. So you're, so you're not the uh, supervisor on scene? Fucking attack dogs and as bright. Gets paid a hundred fifty four thousand oh, dollars a fucking year. So wait, yeah. so wait a minute, all right, all right. What you what you're telling me is basically we've got about two or three million dollars standing here standing doing fucking right nothing. Fucking uh, that's right. And how fucking that's right. right. You think we can't find out information about you guys, man? We can find out all your guys' information, man. You understand that? We're gonna call out all of your misconduct, everything. We want justice for I'm feeling big in your big fucking uniforms while it lasted. Just wait till I get home and do some research on you guys, man. I'm gonna pull out all your fucking shit. All your shit, man. All your shit, man. out in display. Sergeant, you really should take this guy. Why does yeah. this one have Why are you allowing this? Why are you allowing this? This is not a felony right here. Why don't you put your people in check? Why don't you put your people in check? So you want to get up to that position yeah. too? Yeah. Stop us. Yeah. Right. Stop escalating and de-escalate. Put your people in control. Stop acting like sovereign citizens and tell this tyrannical fuck to put his weapon away. No, it's not going to happen. You're doing the state. The same Gestapo blue bullshit and covering up for him. Marcus the Brotherhood of Blue Line ISIS. You're so a fucking disgrace. Guys. Really fucking I come from law enforcement. You're a fucking disgrace. You should come right over here and arrest that fucking piece of shit. It's a felony. You fucking know it. You're a fucking disgrace. Every fucking single one of you are a disgrace. Take your goddamn badges off. Turn in your weapons and go. Should be. Shouldn't even be a resignation. It should be. There's no reason what you are. Jail time. 
for this guy. This guy is obstructing justice. That's not even right. This guy is in power obstructing justice and he's not even put in jail. It's not even right. He fiddles on his phone while we're fucking... Standing here for an hour with his weapon out. Trying to prove that you're a yeah, big fat ass white supremacist that's, uh, racist coward motherfucker. For the bargain basement right. Of 236,000 dollars a year.
what's your policy? Okay. You work for us. You need to identify yourself when we ask. Thank you. Yep. You're a sergeant, you need to correct your peoples, man. They don't know how to identify themselves. That is part of your policy. That is part of your policy, officer. For your for your officers not to identify them goes against policy. You understand that? Are you gonna do anything? Are you gonna correct them? Or do we need to file a complaint and take it? We'll file your complaint, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking beady eyed piece of shit. What the fuck are you doing here anyway? This is National City, man. No black cops? There's not one no, black cop out here. So they race out here. Yeah. I know, huh? That shit going on. You know where it's, it's genocide. They got guys, the, you uh, realize it's worldwide genocide. Latinos and, and the white guys, but... Then again, maybe it's a good thing because sometimes the black, black cops are worse than the white guys. Well, because they have yep. to prove showing out for the white cop. Yep. Black police showing up Where's for the, the white cop. Yep. You know what song that's from, right? Yep. Yeah. The Latinos got to do it too, man. Don't don't get it twisted. Yeah. yeah. They have to prove you they're, they're, they're partially money, accepted. Uh, they're you're only partially accepted, man. As long as you're a good little fucking deputy. You know when uh, now I know this is the sheriff, but when San Diego PD first started, they didn't allow African Americans in there. Oh, I know. They didn't allow women either. And then when they finally, when they finally um, We are going to go across the street to the police station. I'm about to change my camera battery pretty soon. From last so time this we came is around San back. Diego Police Department. Don't know why they're here. Secure area. We need you across the street. Secure for what? Secure for what? Is this not a public sidewalk? We're securing this area. So what? What part is secure exactly? Okay. Are you going to tell me what part is secure? Where we're allowed to walk and where we're not? I've asked you to go across the street. So I can't go on that side Wait, of the street. Keep going. If you'd like well, to go, keep going. So what is the difference, right, dude? You're I mean, right. you're telling us we're we here to argue with you. We're saying this building's being secured. Oh, okay, and we're not going police. to the building. So okay, we are so walking on the sidewalk. Then. Okay, then why did you stop us to begin with, dude? This is public, man. Just because you're a fucking cop, don't mean you get to tell us where to go, dude. We're not trying to go in this, okay? All we're doing is walking around in Have your community. Night. Have a good night. Yeah, you too, man. Respect our right to film. Have a good night. Respect our right to walk. Right to travel freely without harassment. You guys are proving our point like fucking nothing, man. Name and ID. Name and ID. Name and ID. That's your policy. Name and ID. You can't even read that shit. Name and ID. Look at this shit. You know you're violating 
policy right now. Why do they you guys think you guys are gonna be fucking cops, dude? You guys are explorers. I know, I almost they're, feel bad. They're not even cops, dude. They're explorers. Oh, I was gonna say. Exactly. And I don't have to show respect to anybody, okay? It's my right to speak my mind, okay? It's called First Amendment. If you don't like it... Yeah, and we are... And, and listen, and that's all they had to say. They, are you telling me they don't have no badge? They don't have police badges, no. And that's all they had to say. So if an explorer does something to you represent them, you can identify them. That's what you're saying. So this is how you're training your new booties, huh? Exactly. The just to be just lead, like you, man. To, to wrong, be man. just like you, man. Watch yourself. Don't worry about me, okay? Watch yourself. My safety is none of your business, okay? Right. Your safety, your safety results in people getting killed. Have a good night. No, you have a good night. We will be right here. Guys, want to be cops? There's a lot more of that in store in the future. Yep. You don't want your stuff on blast. Don't be a public servant, man. It's not a good time to be a cop. Nope. This is the culture you created, man. I could no tell. Shit. I could I tell you're a corrupt cop, man, just by the way you're acting, man. It is not rocket science. That is for damn sure. I mean, do we not have a right to be curious of why all these fucking cop cars are here? Ain't nothing going on, man. There's no violence, man. Nobody's in the streets. The only people who are in the streets are the sheriffs, man. So what? what is all this about? Huh? Very fearful people. What, where where is your justification for this, man? Can I get your name and ID, officer? Sure. Which one? My first or last name? I don't really care about your first name. What's your last name and your ID number? Thank you. sooner you guys go home, we'll go home, man. How you feel about your chief cowering out of the meeting? That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't blame him. I would have done yeah, the same shit. I don't blame shit. him. I don't got any other response either. Yeah. But... Your chief reflects a lot on you guys. Is this what you signed up for? Yep. Huh? Is this what you wanted to be when you were a little boy? Babysitting people on the corner? Not doing anything wrong? I just wanted to have power. Is this what, hey, is this what you signed up for, man? Or did you think you were going to catch rapists and criminals and drug cartels and shit like that? Huh? Or did you just want power? Yeah, you got bullied as a kid and just wanted some power, huh? Yep, that's exactly it, man. Nobody liked you as a kid, so now you force people to like you. <laughs> You ever heard of cop watch? Huh? Hey, you ever heard of cop watch? You better get used to us, man, because we're going to be holding you guys accountable on the streets. We're okay? We're going to ruin everything. Yep, we're going to ruin all your fun, man. Everything you do is going to be exposed, man. And we'll let the real community decide on who's corrupt. Okay? We don't need we don't need city council to, to figure that shit out. We already know, man. We've been filming cops for a long time. We know you guys are all fucking corrupt. Yeah, how, hey, when, when your chief took off like a little coward, how do you think that made these explorers feel? That their little, that their boss is a little fucking sissy boy that had to go run and hide from people who just wanted some truth. 
Oh, you better go get them, man. Go get them. Look, look. Aren't you going to tell them where they can't walk? Oh, no, that's just us because we got camera. I got gotcha. you. Oh, the lights. Like cockroaches. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I see how it is, man. Bonnie, stop talking to cops. You're a sad, sad human being, dude. Stop talking to cops. Okay, thank you. Is there like an emergency going on or something? No. Is there something going on that we don't know about? Is there an urgent scene? I'm pretty sure you know about I don't really know why you guys got all these officers out here. There's fucking people over there. Yeah, there's about like 30, 40, 50 cops. Exactly. Like all of this. So and they're the ones that are blocking the street. Why they're the ones with weapons here? out. But we're the bad guys. But we're the bad guys. It's they got weapons. You got thugs in the middle of the street blocking traffic. But we're the bad guys because we want transparency. Is that that's that's right, right? That's right, right? Am I correct? None of us are hurting anyone. We just want transparency and answers and you got goons over there with weapons, but we're the bad guys. But you guys, yeah, you guys want to escalate stuff. You guys want to stop a riot. Uh, you got all those cops in fucking riot gear, man. You know who's here for the riot. This is not are we allowed to walk down this sidewalk? We're having everybody stand. Is it blocked off? We're blocking it off. Is it blocked off? I just told you it's blocked off. off. You're, are you asking me or is that a lawful order? I'm asking you. If you're asking me, I'm going to walk through then. Is that a lawful yeah. order or not? Sweetie, this is a public sidewalk and it's not blocked off. You technically have to put tape up if you're going to block off. Oh, Look, like it's blocked off. I told you it's blocked off. Okay, I don't know why you want to argue. It's blocked I'm off. I'm not arguing. I'm okay. asking if we're she's telling you it's blocked me, off. No, Can you guys scoot back? She told me she is asking me. Are you asking me or telling me? What is the lawful order? What is the lawful order? Area secure. What is the lawful order? She just told me other work. She just told me otherwise, and she's higher authority than you. We've told you multiple times. Area secure. This is a public spot right here. Scoot back. This area secure. You're the one that confronted him. Sorry. You're the one that got in his right face. Because Why are you telling us to scoot back? You're the one that approached us. We because didn't approach you. Seem you seem not to understand. No, I do understand. Means, okay. I am asking a simple question if she asked we, me a question or not. I, I answered it multiple times. I wasn't you. talking to you. I was okay. talking to her, the well, lady who gave me the order. Right. Well, you I didn't give me the order. I she gave me the order and she told me she was I asking a question. I answered it for you. So you're walking in front of him. So and you're going above your authorities. You're the one approaching me and you're telling me to step back. Yeah, that is intimidation. Okay, this is a secure area. We understand. We understand that. We see the Thank barricades. You. We see None the fucking pig right in front of Thank my you. fucking face. None of us we understand armed. it's a secure area. Danger. You got guys with fucking guns all over the place. You we know it's a secure guns, area. This is a camera. What are you afraid of? You guys have no. the guns. We don't. Are we allowed to walk down the sidewalk? No. Yes or no? I said no. Is that secured. a lawful order? I said no. Is that a lawful it's order? Secured. Is it a I'm lawful order? I'm telling you order? not to go down there, yes. And I'm asking you if it's a lawful order. I told you not can to go down there. Can you recite the order? You can tell me a lot of shit. Cops tell us things all the time. Obviously, you're not listening to what I'm telling you. I'm listening to you, and I'm asking you a question. And I've responded. This and area is you secure. You're not an allowed answer. to go down here. I don't know what part of that you don't understand. I don't understand where, okay. where that is in the law that you can just block off sidewalks for no reason. Right. There's nothing going on, dude. There's nothing going on right here. All the shit is in the middle of the street. What are you looking you for? What do you need? I'm trying to get to the other side. There's many ways to get there. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember that next time you're in a hurry to get somewhere, huh? <laughs> Fucking dumbass, so, dude. I'm handicapped. I can't go through. Are you here. handicapped? I got my. Okay. <laughs> How'd you get here? I'm handicapped. Look, 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 look. I'm handicapped. Look, look, look. I'm handicapped. Does a, does a handicap have to be like somebody yeah. in a wheelchair or on crutches? This area is secure. I don't know how you got this far. I saw you walking from that side of the. Oh, because you didn't stop side. her like you stopped us. So, remember, you got in we're our trying face to tell you for this no area reason. Is secure. You can't come this way. Can I talk to you, please? You absolutely can. Okay. Don't yell at me. I'm not gonna yell at you. I simply I asked you a question. I'm, not I'm not just telling you this place okay. is secure right okay. here. Okay. Don't yell at me. I'm not yelling at you. Okay. There's many ways to get wherever you're trying to go. I get why you guys are out here. Okay. Okay. I hope you guys are 
Okay. Do you, do? Okay. do you understand this situation right now that you, you technically caused? Because I simply asked you a question. With respect, I wasn't being an asshole. I simply asked you guys if we can walk down the street. You said I'm asking you not to. That is not a lawful order. We only need to follow laws. Okay? We don't need to follow requests. There's a lot of things that I don't want you guys to do. I'm, I'm, I'm stating... Okay. okay. So you let me know when you want me to answer. Okay. Are you listening to me? Perfectly. Okay. So I asked simply if we can cross the street. You said, I'm asking you not to. I asked you if it was a lawful order. You said, I am asking you not to. This guy wants to interject our conversation and tell me that I can't. How does that work? There is no tape up. You don't have the sidewalk blocked off. This is pedestrian right away. We are allowed to walk through. If it's not a lawful order, we don't have to listen to anything you have to so say. you really have to, you have to hear it out of my mouth that it needs to be a lawful order. Yes, I do. That, it's not that yes, I, I do. you for no, it's not. Because cops ask me a lot of stuff okay. for no reason. Okay. And just because a cop asks something doesn't mean that we have to comply. Just because an okay. uh, officer says something doesn't okay. make it lawful. Well, then I'll make it lawful. Okay. Does that answer your question? That's fine. Thank you. So can you state the PC or site or what? We are walking on this area because it's being taken over by see all these police cars. Yeah, but you're in the middle of the street and all we're trying to do is get down the street. We're trying to leave this area and you guys are preventing us from it. No, we're not. This officer didn't even want us to cross the street, okay? And we made a point that we are allowed to cross the street because this isn't blocked off. As long as you're on the other side of the barricade, I don't have a problem with it. There is no barricade right here. I'm talking about This is a public sidewalk. As you said, crossing the street. Okay, so I was but if you don't want us to go down the sidewalk, I suggest that you put a barricade or you Instead put tape up. Because look, I am press and technically I can go behind all these barricades, okay? Mm, yes, that not is if I, the, not if I ask you not to. Okay, yes, but technically that's what this press pass is for. Okay. I'm trying to be nice, sir. I'm being as nice as I can be. I'm trying to be nice too. I'm, yeah, I'm not know. yelling at you like I yelled at all these people. I, I get you. Okay. I don't get why you're here. Okay. So now you're I mean, I'm not I know, and you you, 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 you kept your distance away from us. And I'm this guy right here though is getting in our face and telling us to back up for no reason. Okay. This is this is the public. You know, this is your city. Is this how you welcome people into your city? we're having around here by telling you guys where you can't walk or where you can't stand okay I understand we can't go there okay that's settled I understand that we're not gonna go that way but this guy he needs an attitude adjuster okay and I see that you're a higher authority I see that you're a higher authority than him I would respect you if you can talk to this guy okay all he's doing is antagonizing it look when we first showed up there was only three of us now look at all these people and it's because of him it's because of what he's created okay we simply ask the explorers their names and IDs okay no we ask their names and ID, okay? They are people, okay? They are people. They are people who are trying to be cops, okay? Is that how we do this? Either way, nobody has an expectation. It's not you, it's me. Those guys are going to grow up. Is that how you break up with people? Those guys are growing up to stop an IDS on the street. Yes, that is exactly All we're doing, I didn't know they were explorers when we walked up. Okay? So we did ask for you. I'm, I'm a cop watcher. We, that's our standard procedure, name and ID, okay? So when I asked them that, it was just a question, you know? So, I mean, I don't understand why you can't take criticism as a public figure. So that lady was cool and respectful and knows how to talk to people like a human being. This guy, on the other hand, is a piece of shit. He can't take criticism. Nope. He can't take anything. He can't take any back talking. He can't take any back talking. Right? He's that Linda Linda kid. Linda, listen, Linda, Linda. Linda, 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 listen, Linda, no, 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 honey, Linda, honey, hey, you know I made a song honey, for your friend Newman over Linda, there, I can make a song for you too, listening. but you're not listening, Linda, Linda, Linda. that's what, what you say to your wife, Andrews I dream of, I want to get your when they take a little you know, Andrews snooze, <laughs> do they dream, Andrews, badge number is 465, okay. it works with all last names, <laughs> right, yep. you can stare at me all you want, that's cool. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah. I, I, I played the stare game in elementary school. I used to be a master of arms. I know you're Yeah. Because I use my words. I stare into your eyes.
like, a, like, a, like an adult? Alright, I'm done with this piece of you shit. You know, I told my free. Hey, man. Hey. I'll see you on the streets, man. Alright? We'll be watching you. We'll be watching your every move, man. We're gonna be out in these streets. We're gonna be out in these streets filming all you guys, dude. Holding you guys accountable. And you explorers, man, I highly suggest don't join the gang. Don't join the gang. It is a gang, it is full of corruption, and they will shit on you the moment they get. Yep. Young and impressionable. It's brainwashing, man. You in abusive culture. Yep. Is this what you want to be like? Is this what you want to be like? This is what you're going to turn into if you guys keep it up, man. You can't even handle public criticism. This is going to be your job to be running your mind. You're being criticized by the public. So if that's what you want, I, I suggest now you get a thick skin and learn how to take criticism. What's your name and ID, officer? Young Learn how to self reflect and grow like an adult. SD, SDPD makes the scene along with the sheriff's department for about 30 people who are all going to work tomorrow. Now they want to hurt people. B-Squad. B-Squad! Boom! 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 Oh, and they all got their batons out. We're all unarmed. All of us are unarmed. What's this There's no need. We're all unarmed. They're coming! No shit. The biggest fucking cowards out there are the ones that have to wear a uniform to feel big. Why'd you guys come out here, man? Why'd you guys come from the city of San Diego to fuck with us, man? You they guys wanted us some fucking... Go back to San Diego, man. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. All cops are bastards. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Abolish the police. Hey buddy, Nine can I walk down the sidewalk? We can use that side. Oh, really? Cool. Why can't we use this side? Why can't I use this side? Is there something wrong? Is there something going on over there? Is there construction? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. Hey friend. Hey buddy. <laughs> I'm not talking to you aggressively. Can we be buddies now? Can I just know your name so I can put your name in a song yeah. like Newman's? Can I, can I know your name now since you already threatened me? Just come a little Have you heard Newman's song? Do you want to hear it? It's really funny. <laughs> it's a good song. What do Newman's dream of <laughs> when they take a little Newman's news? Do they dream of beating minorities or beating their wife and kids too? <laughs> See, if I knew your name, I could put your name in that song. Yeah. Look, he's holding the trigger. Look, 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 listen now. Get your finger off that trigger. What are you trying to prove with your finger on the trigger? That's firearm safety, man. You know it. Are, are you, you trying to intimidate me? us? Are you threatening me with that? Is that an intimidation tactic? Why are you making that noise with that gun? Not having emotional control is not something to be proud about. Yeah, right? Can you not take criticism? Is that what's going on here? You have psychopathic behaviors, buddy. Yeah. Like, for real. Rich! What hey, do you just dream of? <laughs> <laughs> when they take a little Richie's That was perfect. Oh, I'm, I'm grabbing onto those opportunities. That was perfect. <laughs> hey, Rich. <laughs> yeah, now it's for Rich. <laughs> what do Richard dream of? <laughs> when they take a little Richard's <laughs> Yeah.
Oh man. I can still see through it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, here comes our view. Oh, sorry guys. Oh, sorry, you can't see anything. <laughs> You're obstructing our view, guys. <laughs> ah. Hello, sir. Hello, officer. How are you doing? Good, how are you? That dude, Rich, needs to calm down. Right? right? <laughs> Peace out, Richie Rich! <laughs> Bye, Richard! It was fun! Hey, take a Xanax tonight. You need to calm the fuck down, dude. You can sing my song oh, to you, uh, to in. fall asleep if you want. It's coming? Yeah. Are you in a little Shorty! 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 Shorty the pimp! Hey! <laughs> Alright, we'll leave it alone, man. <laughs> like I said, don't beat your wife and kids tonight. <laughs> 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 Back to the Smurfville. <laughs> he did not have to die. He did. Not, and, he did. Did not. and many people, that has happened to many people, and it doesn't yes. need to happen to another one. Tell those stories when you leave here. You get on your social media, do that, you share those pages. Please retweet and uplift what happened here tonight. And uplift the incident. And please keep talking about them. Yes. They need that yes. support. That's all I'm saying. Sorry.